Hey guys, Broke Dad here. Today I'm going to show you how to make this veggie corral. Stay tuned for this episode of Broke Dad. For this project I used pre-cut strips of redwood from my local hardware store. I measured the space in the kitchen where I wanted to keep the veggie corral and transposed the measurements to the piece of lumber. You can use a wax pencil or regular pencil to make these marks and sand them off at a later time. I used a table saw to make these cuts. You can use a miter saw, a hand saw, a band saw, or a circular saw to make these cuts. Just be sure to follow safety procedures for whatever tool that you choose to use. Because the piece is not holding a lot of weight or being moved much, I decided to simply use wood glue to fasten it together. I didn't use joinery for simplicity, and I didn't want to use screws because they aren't slightly. Before gluing, it is smart to line the pieces up and make sure that they are even. This also allows you to plan the setup of your clamps as the glue will dry on you quickly. Apply a liberal amount of glue. You can always wipe the glue that seeps out with a slightly dampened paper towel. Or if the glue dries, you can scrape it away and sand it at a later time. Clamp the glued pieces together, making sure that they remain even while the glue is still pliable. To make the top tier of the corral, I set three braces for support. I then glued the perpendicular pieces into the frame, completing the top portion. For the bottom tier, I made the same dimension box, but separated the two sides out by gluing a piece in the middle. Once the frame is dry, lay out the pieces for the bottom and space them accordingly. Glue the vertical pieces to the frame. Now when drying wood glue like this, I like to place a scrap piece of wood over the piece and place the weight on top of that. This will provide an even pressure, much like when clamping, and prevent the weight from damaging the piece. Once the glue has dried, this would be an appropriate time to take a flexible piece of high grit sandpaper and smooth everything out. To connect the top and bottom corral, I cut four strips the same length. I then took the top corral and flipped it onto a level bench. Lining the pieces up, I made a small pencil mark to help me check alignment when gluing. This also gives me a guideline for where I need to apply the glue. Set the pieces together and be sure to wipe excess glue if possible. Now remember, if you miss glue, don't freak out. It can always be chiseled or sanded away once it's dry. I placed an object behind the glued support to hold it in place while gluing its twin to the other side. You can always glue these one at a time by, with using a clamp if you are not confident in keeping them aligned. Once both pieces are glued, place a clamp, triple check your alignment, and let it dry for a few hours. Now give the piece a once over with sandpaper and wipe away all the sanding dust with a piece of tack cloth. To protect and seal this piece, I chose to use Winmax Wipe On Poly Clear Satin. Using an old cut up t shirt and rubber gloves, I applied the polyurethane in even strokes that moved with the grain of the wood. It is always wise to test the clear coat you are applying on a piece of scrap wood from the same stock you are using. This way you can be sure you are going to be satisfied with the finished color and texture. Apply several coats of the finish and allow ample time for it to dry before using. Now you have an elegant way to store your produce. The gaps in the bottom will allow for better airflow and will help keep produce fresher for a longer period of time. I hope this video has been informative. And I want to thank you for watching.